Okay, let's do something in the demo. Because I did something in the full version and it's really, really cluttered and it's hard to sort all my parts. I want to do something in demo mode to get something to go to the moon. So we're going to go to the vehicle assembly building. And wow, look at the total lack of parts. This will be awesome. No confusion as to what I'm supposed to be doing here. Alright, let's go to structure. We're going to add a decoupler. This is going to separate the rocket from anything beneath it. The arrow points as to what's going to detach, so the capsule will go upwards as everything beneath the coupler stays on it. Alright, let's add some stability control. This will help my rocket steer. Steering is very important. And let's add us, us, me, we, a small fuel tank and a small engine. This is what we're going to use to power the rocket to get it around in space. And then we're going to add reaction control system fuel. This is going to be what's uh, used to help aim the rocket as we fly around. Because these little doohickeys here, RCS thruster blocks, use these tanks. So we need to use the fuel. They won't burn your fuel and oxidizer contained within your main fuel tanks. That's only for your main engines. Okay, I'm going to need some landing struts, because I want to land on the moon. So I'll put these pretty low to the ground. As you know what, I just realized something. I need landing gear. So I'll put only two on. Oh, that's going to be a pain. My landing legs are going to get in the way. Mmm, what to do? Oh, let's put them here. Actually, you know what? Let's figure out where the center of mass is. Wow, I guessed correctly. This little tool down here shows center of mass. We also have center of lift and center of thrust. I really care about center of mass. I don't care about center of thrust because everything goes on the very bottom of the rocket, so center of... They, they should line up through the long axis of the rocket. Now I could put on a ladder, so my little guy could actually jump and cling on to this and then climb his way back onto the capsule. This will shift the center of mass a teensy bit, but I don't think this weighs... Oh yeah, 0 0.005 tons. Unit of measurement in this game is tons in terms of weight. Okay, so that's a lander. We'll use this to land. Groovy, groovy, groovy. Okay, we'll put another decoupler. Oh, I just realized something. This is all sorts of messed up. Because what will happen when I detach my separator here, under the capsule, the parachute would fire. I want to keep that separate. Now, I need something to get us to the moon. So I'm going to put a bigger fuel tank. self T-800. And I want a gimbaled engine, the LVT-45, because this is going to help us steer. This will be important to help us save our RCS fuel on these tanks for later. I'll put another decoupler, and I'm going to put a tri-stack. It's got three little nodes on it, so you can put three things. This is what we're going to use to get us into higher orbit. Now we're going to put in more decouplers. And now I'm going to throw on what's going to get us off the ground. Actually, I'm not. This is what's going to get us out of the atmosphere. I'm going to use boosters to actually get us off the ground. I cheat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so I need to use these radial decouplers. These allow me to put stuff on the sides of the rocket that we will jettison later to shave weight. 
And now I'll put on my boosters. This is a good basic, no frills, derp-tastic design. If I can get the stupid thing to fit. Okay, I guess we'll do that then. There we go. And we'll line them up so they're more or less even. I can do a little better than that. Perfect. Alright. So what's going to happen, you see this big long list of parts on the far right. This is my staging order. If I can make that a little shorter. I want the boosters to fall away when they're empty. And then the main engines down here will fire. And then the same thing will happen up here. I want the decouplers to fire, and then these engines to fire. I can even do the same with this, and now I only have seven stages versus ten. Same number of parts. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make it so this rocket can actually aim itself where I want it to go while it's in atmosphere. To do this, I'll add some fins. Fins make everything better. Now because I got three basic rockets all centered around the center axis of this thing, this thing is going to flop it around like crazy. So what we got to do is we got to add struts to tie everything together. If it moves and it shouldn't, use struts. They're like giant staples. Staples fix everything. If it doesn't move and it should, you got to use more boosters. Boosters make everything better. Because this thing is a bit tall, I think we should add some stabilizers. So this thing will actually sit above the ground a little bit before I hit the launch button. Perfect. And we'll have these fire off at the same time. Now, as this is the demo, they don't have uh, any science instrumentation or anything, so this is going to be pretty no frills. That'll work. It'll work just fine. Nice and basic, nothing fancy. And we're going to call this Moonshot. Save it and launch it. Alright, so I got Jebediah Kerman there at the controls. The launch tower is not uh, included in the main game. They deleted that recently. I kind of miss it actually, so it's nice seeing it here. Now something I gotta do before I launch is I gotta turn on my computer controls, which is that module way up at the top. And I do that by pressing T. And then SAS lights up. And now you see the fins working furiously to keep this rocket centered. No matter. I'll throttle up the engines that are not going to be activated for a while, and I'm going to hit spacebar, and off we go. The fins are going to help steer while we're in a dense lower atmosphere. You can see them working and a rocket swaying. And we call that a waltz. Slow dance. It's not square dancing. I'm not sure what that is. Let's go full throttle eventually. SRBs will burn out in a bit. Waltz is at what time, babe? Three-fourths. Three-four time? I'm not sure what that was, but it was wobbling back and forth. Guest appearance, my lovely wife, and I find out pretty quick that my engines are just making barely enough thrust to overcome gravity because I am slowing down. And looks like we're going to break even, and now we're going to start... Come on, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. It's speeding up, yay. Alright, so now my thrust to weight ratio is just over one now. I had to burn off some of this fuel first. So I don't know if we're going to go to the moon today. We'll definitely go to space. I'm just not too confident about the moon. Well, Jebediah is liking it. He seems to be having a grand old time here. Let's do IVA and see the inside of our spacecraft. All your critical instruments are shown here. You have your nav ball in the center, your 
radar altitude, which is very important, and I wish they had that on the main display when you're outside the spacecraft. This clock-looking thing is your altitude. It looks like we're getting ready to pass 10,000 feet, the hour hand. Vertical climb speed, which is about what that is. This thing here is my atmosphere density. All right, let's get out of that. All right, so now I'm above 10,000 feet. I need to start turning to the right in order to steal some of that free eastward planetary rotation motion to help get into orbit. And I'm starting to roll. Turn SAS back on. And now my nav ball is indicating they're more or less heading right where the nose is pointing. Still kind of dancing around. No matter. Still going up. I'm about to hit fuel exhaustion on this first stage. This is not a problem. Because I'm about to go hit that second stage. Which is actually the third stage when you think about it. Because the first stage was the boosters. I'm going to press T again, and we're going to go ahead and roll over a little bit more. Not roll over, uh, yaw, pitch over, because now I'm flying kind of crooked. And we're going to continue our ascent. I hit M, I go to map. I will see my apoapsis is climbing and heading eastward, which is a good thing. I think I want to tilt a little bit upwards. Make that climb a bit more. There we go. Now I can actually hit X now. That kills my throttle. You notice my altitude is beginning to slowly degrade the planned apoapsis point because I'm still in atmosphere. And I'm experiencing some air drag, although not much because the atmosphere is very thin right now. Oh, look at the stars. The backbone of the galaxy. There's our target, the moon, right off the front end of the rocket. Which, if we zoom out, is right there. Shows us its velocity and its altitude. Alright, so now I got the little music playing in the background. It says, Welcome to Space. And the problem is now, I'm using the capsules reaction wheels to try to turn and steer this rocket. And it's a very heavy rocket still, so it's having trouble keeping up. So i got to use the WASD cluster on my keyboard to yaw, pitch, and roll. I'm not really worried about roll right now. It's best to navigate off the nav ball, what it's indicating, versus the attitude you see of the rocket itself. Because the nav ball um, responds to your controls directly. It's kind of weird how to explain it. But you think you're trying to pitch your spacecraft up by pressing W, and then your spacecraft goes off to one side, and you're like, huh? How'd that happen? But then your nav ball is actually doing what you wanted it to do. So you can't always navigate off the spacecraft itself. You have to use the controls. Alright, so we're right about at Apoapsis, so I need to turn back on my engines, and we're going to burn ourselves up into an orbit. I don't know if I need full thrust or not. Now we'll see. Our planned orbit, our impact point, moving eastward over the planet. And eventually, that impact point will no longer collide with the planet. And that'll be welcome to orbit. Because I'm still ballistic at this point. Oh no, this stage is going to run out of fuel. I wonder if I'll have the fuel on this third stage to get me into orbit of the moon. I should. Well, let's fire that off. Hitting space. I try to keep my nose pointing at 90, because the moon is all along 90. Okay, our altitude is falling, but we're not in trouble yet. Atmosphere starts at around 70,000 meters. 
So I got 27,000 meters worth of playtime here. This is your resource meter. I can sort it by stage only. Alright, that's what we want to see. So now I can hit X again. Periapsis is a low point of 81,000. Apoapsis is the high point at 160,000, so about double. Alright, so now I'm in stable orbit. I can actually just stop here and the dude's chilling out in his little spacecraft. Happy day. But that's not what we're here to do. We're here to get to the moon. So we do set as target. And now what I want to do is I want to plan a maneuver using a maneuver node. You just right click. Is it right click? Crap, I don't know anymore. Left click, left click again. And now I can drag this these little sliders around. I'm really concerned about the green ones, which is prograde and retrograde. Oh, oh, what was that? Okay, so now I see closest approach and target position at closest approach. Well, that's not going to work. I'm going to totally overshoot my rocket, so I need to do it back here. Oh, crap, I didn't select it. All right, so this shows a moon encounter and then moon escape. That might not be enough. I want to more or less get there. Maybe that'll work. I'm sliding this maneuver node around so I can eventually get an encounter with the moon. It even tells me the high point of the low point of the moon encounter, which is pretty high. Any better? Oh yeah, 239. 67? Yeah, we can do 67. Alright, so now it shows me down here at my nav ball where I need to aim my rocket and how much velocity I need to increase by. That's called delta V. If you don't have the fuel to burn, you're going to run out of fuel before your delta V requirement is met and then you will miss your target. I don't have any mods. Well, this being the demo, there are no mods installed, so I can't uh, see if I actually have that much fuel or not. It'll let you plan out a maneuver that's impossible. It doesn't care. So we're going to speed this up a bit so we can get around to the maneuver node. There's a little countdown timer at the bottom of the screen. It says 22 minutes and climbing, or dropping rather. And I can't warp any faster because we're pretty low to the planet. It's fine. We're just going to wait for our orbit. Now, I know this will get me to the moon. I don't know if this will get me back. Alright, that's probably good enough. Close enough. I want to start the burn before I hit the node, actually, because it's going to take me some time to burn through it. And I don't have to go full throttle. I can kind of sit back and let it do a slow burn. Stage only. So right now it shows me up at the top I'm burning 1.54 units of fuel a second and I have 186. So let's lower that down to below 1. So I got about 3 minutes worth of fuel if you do the math. 3, 3.5, three something like that. And you can see my delta V requirement, how much more velocity I need slowly dropping. That's fine. If I had the nuclear engine, I'd just turn that on low thrust and let it go because the nuclear engines are very, very efficient. But I don't have those here, this being the demo. So pretty. I want to drive over those mountains once. A little lander, a little car. Hill climbing. Maybe I'll afford some of these rivers and stuff. There's supposed to be little easter eggs on the planet surface that you can uh, see and get to and all that, find things. I have not. There's a little airport near the Kerbal Launch Center. These teeny little islands down here. Oh look at debris. Probably the launch gantries that I had. Okay, so I'm a little over halfway through my planned burn. 
You can even see that the uh, maneuver node. Oh, I need to be out of map view. I need to be in this view. Press C, and you can see my nav ball. And it's roughly prograde. The green circle is prograde. The one with the X through it is retrograde, as in basically backwards. And I can pretty line up real close using the nav ball in here. Just kind of dominates your view, though. All right, so I got 80 seconds worth of thrust. Well, a little more than 80 seconds worth of thrust, and we're almost done with our maneuver. So this might actually work. There's our target. We'll hit V, go into orbital camera mode. I think we're in surface mode before. All right, getting there. Just making sure I'm lined up with my target at this point. Turn the throttle down a little bit. Flying all by nav ball at this point. And there we go. Bam. All right. So now it shows my computer trajectory if I don't do anything about it at all. It's going to kick me. Oh, let's see what that says. In parapsis, all right. What's going to happen? Let me clear this by selecting it. Click the X. Is I'm going to get a moon encounter, and then I get a moon escape. It looks like I'm going to pick up a lot of velocity doing it, so I'm going to slingshot behind the moon, and then I'm going to hit Kerbin escape right out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. Looks so like a gravity slingshot maneuver. Well, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to have to slow down when I get near the moon. So let's do that. Oh, don't want to go too fast. Oh yeah, looks like I'm going to... You can tell I'm going to spiral around it or something. Maybe we'll get an impactor. That'll be cool. Oh, stop, stop! Oh yeah, awesome. <laughs> let's slow down now. Well, this will be a direct descent landing. This is what the Apollo program originally tried to do when they're doing their initial studies. It was send a craft to take off, go straight to the moon, land, take off again, and come back to Earth. It's called direct descent. The problem with direct descent is you need a humongous rocket to do it. Okay, you see my orbit totally playing around at this point. So I'm no longer going to get kicked out of the system. But I'm still dealing with the fact I'm going to impact with the plant with the moon. That's not a problem. I got fuel on this thing to burn up. And I still have my engine here, my fuel tank here, that I can burn up in order to actually negotiate the landing. Oh, that's done. Eject. Okay, you know, we're going to save that fuel tank. That's going to fall away, because I actually accelerated away from it. I'll probably find it on the surface later. It'll probably land, probably close to where I'm going to land. It'll be an impactor. And I'm going to risk speeding up a little bit, because this part's boring. That's no moon, that's the moon. Slow back down again, make sure I'm pointed directly uh, retrograde, burn off some velocity, let's kick it down to 200. Any second now, close enough, speed this up, the moon is trying to eat me as I get closer, you'll see the details start spiking up and stuff. Okay, let's slow down. Alright, you see my velocity, my orbital velocity has kicked up a whole bunch. We're going to switch to surface. Okay, and we're going to do another burn. And we're going to do this at full power. As you can see at full power, 
I'm using a little over one unit of fuel per second, so I basically got two and a half minutes of gas. We'll kick this down to 200 meters per second again. So I really don't feel like slamming into the surface of the moon. That'll make a poor demonstration video. I've done this many times, but I don't always succeed. All right, what we got? We're at 32,000 meters up. Let's hit G. G. There we go. Get my landing gear deployed. I'll kick this down to 200 again. Doesn't take too long to do it. I'll hit V and we're going to go to auto and this should put me in a, there we go, almost like surface orientation. I can even use RCS fuel to slow down, although not very much. It's not enough to overcome. If I had four more sets of thrusters, I could, um, I could use that to overcome gravity at this point because the moon's gravity is quite a bit reduced from curbing gravity. Let's bleed off some more speed. Let's go down to 100 meters per second. And if I had another set of thrusters, I could actually use them to kind of scoot me along sideways. That's not 100. Bad private. No cookie treat for you. Using stability control, I'm going to, so I don't, I'll have to actively stab the buttons to keep the thing nice and level, which kind of, i got bigger things to worry about, like not impacting the surface of the, of the moon. So I want to turn that on and more or less keep it pointing at retrograde. Okay, 12,000 meters. I'll do another burn. Okay. So I wish not to kill my Kerbin, my Jebediah today. He's awesome. He doesn't deserve to die. Oh, look, a ladder. Let's go ahead and extend that. Click. Chink, chink, chink. Yay. So he can climb down and then he'll fall off and bang his head and hopefully won't cut his suit open and die. That'd be not good. Alright, getting there. Getting there, let's do 50. Alright. Gravity's continuing to suck me down. Gravity got you down. There are some mods out there that add the ability to hover. You just hit a button, I guess, and it tries to maintain just enough thrust to hover. I don't have that. This is all flying. Hey, Katie. Uh-oh. You dropping stuff. Hopefully I don't drop my rocket. Alright, coming up. Any minute. 4,000 meters. Let's get some thrust going here, cancel some of that out. Oh no, a bug. End of the world. Little kids are fun. I got my hands all over the keyboard now. Okay, this is going to get a little hairy. Slow down some. Stop slowing down. I could probably do this all in one go and not burn up a whole bunch of fuel doing it. Whoa. This should be survivable. And... Boink! 
Yay, landing. I did it. Let's shut down that engine. Now we can celebrate by saying EVA. Now we can let go. Thunk. Oh, wow. Nice. That's right. Gravity here is like one sixth of Kerbin, so you can go boing. So that's about going to get up to the ladder since the ladder does not go all the way up. All right, so the altitude is 1,400. So if I used that as an indicator of how high I was, I would have gone smash. All right, so now I left up and grabbed on there like I'm doing parkour or something. Awesome. I thunk. So now we're on the moon. And now I can hit R. He'll pull out his little thruster pack, and then... He can overcome gravity just with his suit. There is a challenge to survive a landing using just your suit. Good luck getting anywhere. Well, that concludes this tutorial, because I'm not too interested in seeing if this can get off the ground, but thanks for watching.